hello guys my name is desmond and i welcome you guys to my youtube channel where i solve past exam papers okay guys so before i start with question 3.2 of grade 11 november exam paper of the year 2017 i would like to just indicate to you that one of my students from northwest suggested that i do a bit of an upgrade or a change uh, to my setup so that they are able to see either the question paper the graph or the given statement throughout the lesson so i hope you are able to realize that uh, there's a complete change in terms of the the setup as compared to the previous question that we solved which was question 3.1 I can just quickly show you if you have watched the video that i posted yesterday you will realize that uh, i've done it on this paper and um, you know the the difference is that uh, the the graph the text and the numbers everything is a bit a uh, uh, large so everyone can be able to see and again you can be able to see uh, on this new setup, you can be able to see the given graph uh, throughout the question. So, without any waste of time, I would like to also indicate to you guys that we've got a Telegram channel. That's where I post all the question papers, not only for the subject that I treat, but for almost all the subjects that you may be doing in, in high school. Uh, that includes English, first additional language, uh, life sciences, geography, mathematics, physical sciences, mathematical literacy, uh, business studies, accounting, economics, etc. So, uh, I think now we can start with the business of the day. So, I would encourage you guys to check out our YouTube uh, channel, which is solving exam papers please do make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on our daily uploads and again please do check out uh, my telegram channel you just search for if you've got a telegram you just search for a uh, solving exam papers that's where you'll be able to join and access these question papers for free so uh, without any waste of time guys i've got question 3.2 there it's a continuation of the question that we started um yesterday so 3.2 says determine the equation of ac in the form y is equals to mx plus c okay so let's have a look at the diagram so you're able to see that You've got your A there and your C. So it's more like you're requested to determine the equation of that line A, C. Okay? So based on the information that we've got, I can just uh, write down what we have so far. Obviously, we have the coordinates of A, which is negative 2, negative 5. What else do we have? regarding line ac so if you remember i'll just use this paper if you remember from the previous question we were requested to uh, determine the gradient of ac so we made use of uh, the equation of b d to calculate the gradient of ac so i hope you understood completely yesterday's lesson how I calculated the gradient of AC, which was 2. So, the other information that we have in relation to segment AC, it's the gradient. So, M of AC, it's equals to 2. So, it was calculated to be 2. So, remember guys, if you've got a... If you've got given or calculated coordinates and the gradient. 
you use this formula to calculate for the a uh, a uh, you know to calculate the equation in that form this is the formula that you use i assume at this stage we know this formula it's just a matter of you having an understanding of which formula to use in which situation so you just need to bear in mind that when you've got a given or calculated coordinate and uh, the given or calculated gradient you use this formula the formula is y minus y1 which is equals to m into x minus x1 so um, okay i've got a question there let's see what the question says i'll just check uh someone is asking why the given or the calculated okay that's a that's a very good question so a uh, I'm saying the given or the calculated because in this case we are given the coordinates of a right so in some cases you may be requested to first calculate the coordinates of a it could be the coordinates of C so that's where you'll be able to then use the calculated coordinates to either determine the equation of a particular segment so i think this is a good example guys where um uh, let's see where we are given the coordinates of ac and a uh, we calculated the gradient of ac i think this is the best example in terms of what I mean by given or calculated. So it means in this case, we're going to use the given coordinates and use the calculated gradient to determine the equation of AC in that specified form. So it's just a matter of us substituting into this formula and giving the final answer in that requested form. So let's see. A, your y1 and x1 are these coordinates so, so this is your x1 this is your y1 so it's just a matter of substituting all of this formula and making y the subject of the formula and arrange the uh, the equation in that requested form so let's see you've got your y minus what is your y1 remember guys this is your y1 this is your x1 so remember guys the most important thing always substitute in brackets so we've got minus 5 which is equals to your calculated m it's 2 so it doesn't matter whether a uh, your answer is positive or negative it's always a good practice to substitute whatever that you say uh, 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 whatever that you substitute in brackets so if you do that in all of your calculations uh, you will get to realize the benefit of always substituting in brackets regardless of whether the value is negative or positive so you've got um, your x minus into our x is negative 2 so just while we are still on um, this equation guys the benefits of you substituting in brackets is because let's say for instance you had to do a very long calculation and you realize towards the end of the answer that you made a mistake somewhere so a uh, when you substituted everything in brackets you are able to notice exactly where to check because obviously why it's what is given negative is part of that formula so you will now be able to check if what you substituted in brackets is exactly what was given in uh, the coordinates so otherwise if it was the calculated coordinates you are also able to verify if you substituted correctly your y1 your gradient and your x1 so if you are then 100 percent sure with the substitution then you now check if you copied 
the, the, the other parts of the equation correctly. Then in that way, uh, you'll be able to detect where you made a mistake and quickly correct and continue. Even when you continue, guys, you might realize that maybe, let's say, for instance, you made an error when it comes to a sign. You made it, let's say, positive instead of negative. Then you know throughout your steps, you just change that one part. So those are the benefits of uh, always substituting in brackets. And it's not only the benefits. So, so I assume someone who was wondering why do I always have to substitute in brackets is fully answered by this explanation. So I think now we can continue. Remember, guys, I've done a lesson where I show you where to start uh, when it comes to either solving or making something the subject of the formula. You start uh, with the brackets. So we've got y. This is negative 1 multiplied by negative 5. You can also punch it on your calculator. Negative times negative is positive. So 1 times 5, it's 5, which is equals 2. I hope you know at this stage, you multiply 2 by that, you multiply 2 by that. So that means you've got 2x. Um, you also have 2 multiplied by positive 2. Remember, guys, uh, I assume you notice that negative and negative gives you positive. So that means inside the brackets, you now have positive 2. So that's why I'm saying it's 2 times 2x and it's 2 times positive 2, which is positive 4. Uh, I'm not sure if we are still on the same page, guys. Uh, but I think so far, so good. You will just make sure uh, to raise your hand in case if I'm, I'm moving too fast or, or, or if you feel like uh, you are left behind so now obviously because we want to make y the subject of the formula so that means y should remain on the left side of the equal sign and you move everything to the right side of the equal sign so that means we've got our 2x remember this form uh, guides you uh, in terms of the way in which you should present your final answer so you should have y is equals to m of which you know m represents the gradient which was calculated to be 2 plus c obviously c it refers to the y intercepts or where the, um, the, the the line ac cuts the y axis so obviously you move 5 to the other side of the equal sign it changes a sign remember you had 4 on this side you move that 5, it changes its original sign, which was positive, and it's now negative. So, your final answer in the requested form, it's y is equal to a 2x minus 1. I assume you are able to see that 4 minus 5 is equals 2 minus 1. So, I think we've got a question. I'll just quickly check... Uh, what what's the question so the question says what are the common mistakes normally made in this type of questions okay so uh, I think common mistakes guys common mistakes it's a, a situation where you incorrectly substitute a, your given coordinates that could be one of the common mistakes Another mistake is for you to forget to change the original sign when you move a, either a term or a number to the other side of the equal sign. So you should always remember that when you move to the other side of the equal sign, you change a sign. And uh, the other mistake is not to answer the question. So can you see the question specified that determine the equation of AC in that form. So if you give the equation in, in a different form, then it, 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 it becomes a different issue where you might lose some marks. So I'm not really sure if those were a, a one of the good tips that a, you know, you'd consider good or relevant, but I think those are the common mistakes that you would do so now let's get to 